Next thing is you can also set up things in such a manner that the CloudTrail logs from one account get delivered to an S3 bucket in other account. As you are able to see in this particular slide, uh, we have got, let's say, here there is an AWS account, here there's another AWS account. But what we want to do is when we enable CloudTrail in both of these accounts, we do not want to write the log files in these accounts. Rather, we will write it into a different account altogether, right? Why are we gonna do this? Because think of a scenario, understand this very well, guys. Think of a scenario, if something goes wrong in these two accounts, right? Because of some reason, these accounts get hacked. So what would happen is the person who hacks into an account first, um, who hacks into an account, the first thing that guy would do is he would go and actually delete all the cloud trail logs, right? Of course, he would disable the trail so that he would disable the trail and he would go ahead and delete all the cloud trail logs. That's what he will try to do first thing. So now the point is, if the if you are storing all the logs within this account itself, uh, once he has gained ac access to this account, once he has gained access, he would be able to delete all the log files. Whereas, if you are writing the log files into an S3 bucket in, in other account, the guy has access only to this account. He would he can go ahead and stop the cloud trail service here, right? He can disable it, he can disable the trail, yeah, okay. But whatever has been written here, that that those logs, uh, you know, this hacker would not be able to change or delete, right? Because please understand the type of permission which we'll set up would be in such a manner that the files can be written to this S3 bucket, right? But the CloudTrail service here would not have rights to go and delete something here. It can just put new files, but it cannot delete any file which has already been written. So that being the case, all the actions till the point of, you know, till the time uh, the hacker actually deletes the trail from these accounts, till that point, whatever actions happen in these accounts, everything will get recorded. So which means uh, it will get recorded that using what uh, access key secret key he got inside, uh, from which API address uh, he came inside, all those things would get written here. And that would help your team later on to actually figure out that, okay, how to you know take care of that hacker and things like that. So that's a really really good practice. Uh, if you have seen our other video, which is uh, related to organizations, I have explained you that how in organization you will have a master account and you will have multiple child accounts, right? So uh, a a good practice would be that from all these different child accounts, you write the CloudTrail logs into one master account. Okay, so that way you should set up. I will try to show you as well in a uh, in demo that how can you set this up so that CloudTrail logs from one account get written to other account. When will you do this? When you have multiple AWS account, you want to aggregate uh, you know from different accounts into one S3 bucket, which is there in one account, then you can go ahead and do this. Um, uh, we already saw right that the way uh, the way uh, log files get placed into your S3 bucket, there will be a folder structure and in the folder structure, there is account number. So when we actually uh, try to bring the logs from different accounts into one S3 bucket, the account number will be different, right? And the, in the form of folders, uh, in the form of folder, the account number will be different. So what I'm trying to say here is, let's say in this particular bucket if i go ahead and bring um, logs from different accounts at this level there will be more folders created right so we'll we'll see that in a while uh, by setting up as well all right now i am logged in uh, to another aws account which is ki2 and i will try to uh, navigate to the cloud trail service now this is also a new account guys and uh, as such I have not done any change here. So we will see that there is no cloud trail currently, uh, you know, I mean there's no trail created in cloud trail in this particular account. 
just the default 90 days events are being shown here. Now what we want to do in this particular demo is that we will go ahead and try to set up a trail here, create a trail in this particular account and we will write the logs to an S3 bucket which is there in other account. So our other account is KI3 and here we have a bucket called KI3. Okay. So we, what we want to do is we want to write the CloudTrail logs from KI2 account to KI3 bucket which is there in KI3 account. Getting it? Now let us go ahead and see how to do that. We'll go ahead and say create trail. I'm going to give it a name KI2 trail. Apply to all the regions. Okay. Yes, all management events, no data event. And then I need to specify uh, the bucket name. So I don't want to create a new bucket name, rather I need to give the name. Now I have to give the name as KI3. Okay. Um, advanced, do you want to give any prefix? I'll just leave these things as it is, I'll say create. So as you can see, it says that there's a problem with bucket policy, of course, when you enable a cloud trail as uh, you know within the same account as we did earlier the bucket policy gets updated automatically but when you want to write the logs from one aws account to the other aws account then you will have to go and manually update the bucket policy so let us see how to do that now we will try to go ahead and uh, update the bucket policy uh, of this particular bucket KI3 in such a manner that it allows uh, you know uh, files to come from the CloudTrail service into a particular uh, folder structure right so let us go ahead and do that we'll go to bucket policy now here let us see so let me increase this a bit for you. So this part is all okay, right? It is just get bucket ACL, cloud trail service, okay? Here, we want that uh, put object should be allowed on uh, one more, uh, you know, on one more folder structure. So what we will do is we will try to populate it like this okay and here we will put an additional entry in this case we will go ahead and put the account number of the ki2 so let us go and try to pick that up. So what is the account number here? Let me find it out. Okay, so copy, paste here, get this thing. Okay, so let me try to save this. It says it contains an invalid JSON. Okay, so I just figured that uh, figured out that I was missing a comma here. <laughs> so I've put that and I've saved this, right? So now let's go back here and we will try to say specify this once again and say create let's see and as you can see now after modifying our bucket policy this trail got created successfully so just to summarize once again I created the trail in the account ki2 but this trail is writing the log files to the bucket ki3 which is there in the ki3 account 
So let us try to see if the relevant folder got created. So go here. Yet to come up. And you can see it has now come up. So see, this, this is the good thing, right? This is the beauty of, um, uh, you know, getting all the logs at one place. It's all well, very well categorized and structured in proper folder structure. So you have uh, different folders created using the different names, different account numbers, and then you can get inside, you can go to the, you know, any particular Cloud Trail or Cloud Trail Digest. I'll talk to you what is this digest um, also in a while. And you can get inside this, go to a particular region and just go to the respective log file as you want. So we covered this part that how can you set up in such a manner that from different AWS accounts, you can bring all the logs to one central account, right? So I hope you got this, great. All right, uh, next thing is about cost and pricing, right? So what's the cost uh, of CloudTrail uh, service? That's what we are going to discuss now. Well, first point, you can view, filter, download the most recent 90 days of your account activity for all management events in supported AWS services free of charge. So we already saw that for 90 days, it's available. There's no charge for it. Just go ahead and look at it. It's totally free. Great. Next thing is cloud trail events can be processed by one trail for free, one copy for each region. Uh, there is a charge for processing events with additional trails, right? You will be charged for any data events or additional copies of management events recorded in that region. So let's let's break the break down the statement. One trail per region is free. Okay, there's no charge for the trail. Another thing is only the management events are free in that trail. If you want to capture data events for data events, you will always be charged. Right? Also, if you create more than one trail, if you create more than one trail in a particular region, then from the second trail, you start getting charged for the management events as well, right? So please, please understand this well. If required, listen to it once again, right? Okay, the first copy of management events within each region is delivered free of charge. So that's what I said. The first uh, trail which you create in any region, that trail would be free for the management events. If you have included data events, you get charged for data events, right? Data events are always charged. If you create, let's say one more trail, then in that additional trail or from the second trail onwards, all the management events would also be charged. But the charge is, is like really less. Understand, if you see here for the management events, you are charged $2 for 100,000 events. 100,000 events, it's only $2. That is the charge. So, I mean, using CloudTrail is not very costly service. Uh, I mean, it's not costly. So, please go ahead and enable it in your accounts if you have not done already. Another thing to understand is when you set up Trail, it writes the log files to S3 bucket. So, you will have to pay for the storage of your S3 bucket, right? Because these log files are you know, getting placed there, it will consume some storage area. For that, you will have to pay. Now, depending on your organization size and how much logs are getting generated and your audit requirements, you may go ahead and uh, uh, actually set up uh, retention policy. So we have talked about Amazon S3 retention policy already. In case you have not seen our S3 video, you can go ahead and look at it. Uh, it's available. So uh, I've shown that what all happens via retention policy. So you can set up some retention policy and say that, you know, let's say when log files get delivered, uh, they will be there in the standard uh, storage class for three months. After three months, they are moved to Glacier. They are kept in Glacier for another one year. And after one year, you may choose to 
delete those files. So it's up to you, the time you can change based on your audit requirements, but you can do something like this. So this will reduce your storage charges further. Okay, uh, all right. There are some statistics given that normally per month it might just cost $3 for all the storage because uh, we already talked that CloudTrail further uh, zips the log files and then only it delivers to your S3 bucket. So the amount of storage which it consumes, that's really less. Briefly, we will talk about uh, management events and uh, data events once again. So uh, I told you already what are management events. So these are basically the uh, you know the API calls or the actions which are happening in terms of uh, creation or modification of your different resources, right? Your EC2 instance creation, termination, things like that, modification of security group, all such things are management events. Data events are those, first of all, these currently apply only to S3 and Lambda, but these are more like object level uh, uh, actions. So when you create an S3 bucket, you delete an S3 bucket, that's management event. But within your S3 bucket, you are you are uploading objects or you are putting objects, you are deleting objects, right? Or you are getting objects. These things are data events. In the same way, you create a Lambda function, delete a Lambda function, that's management event. But invocation of Lambda function every time is a data event. So these things are uh, data events. I hope you are get an idea. The charges for data events uh, are given here, it's 0 0.10 dollars per 100,000 events, right? So this is also real cheap, but then understand that in your account, if you enable CloudTrail for data events, data events actually happen a lot, right? So if you have a website uh, and that website is putting uh, objects or files onto S3, uh, downloading it from there, listing it, so a lot of such API calls will happen. So though this price is really less, uh, but then the, the volume here would be a lot more. So I hope you get an idea of the pricing here.